Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming, my name is Hollow and today I have something a little different for you. It's fair to say that in the Master Rank version of Rise, these monsters are hitting way harder and you might be finding yourself struggling to deal with that new challenge while maybe learning those new switch skills, your weapon updates, the scroll system and more. Or hey, maybe you're doing okay but you'd like to do even better. Well that's what this video is trying to help you with, a guide on how to be a better hunter in Master Rank Rise, so let's begin. Now when it comes to being a better hunter or Master Rank hunter, there's two sides to this coin. There's what you do before and outside the hunt and what you do during the hunt that's going to make a big difference. I'm going to talk about both separately and we're going to start with what you do outside of the hunt, such as having a proper and efficient and effective main setup, a loadout that you run into every hunt. As you can see, I only have two slots actually remaining to gather stuff, but that's okay. With a new feature of the Palamute pouch, we've got an extra eight slots, so we don't need to worry about that. Having what we need to survive and thrive inside of a hunt, that's more important. Obviously, you'll have your potions and mega potions, but why run... 10 potions and 10 mega potions. Run 20 mega potions, they heal you for more. So just bring some extra honey. When you're out of mega potions, craft more using those 10 potions you brought and using that honey you brought. You'll always want something to do with anti-poison or cleansing blights. In the case of null berries or antidotes, another vital idea is to run demon drug and armor skin at very least every single hunt. We're talking about a potion that you take at the beginning of the hunt that lasts for the entire hunt or until you cart. Demon Drug is going to give you plus 5 raw attack power, which is going to make a massive difference in terms of your DPS and potential. And Armor Skin is going to give you 15 extra defense, which may be the saving grace, preventing you from dying to damage that might have otherwise killed you. We can even go further and run Mega versions of Armor Skin or Demon Drug. Mega Armor gives you 25 defense, and Mega Demon Drug gives you plus 7 raw attack power. It's minorly improved, but again, well worth using, especially in the endgame hunts where you're wanting to maximize. To to craft these, you're just going to need some catalysts, which require bitter bugs and honey to craft, and then either mite seeds or adamant seeds to craft the armor skin or the demon drug. At very least, I really, really recommend every hunt you have armor skin and demon drug on at very least. Next is to always bring traps. These will hold a monster in place, and that can be great when the monster is super dangerous and it's transformed in raged mode, or say it's vulnerable and you need to deal some damage to its tail, which is kind of awkward to hit normally, or other vulnerable spots. It's just a free burst window. You shouldn't be ignoring that. Plus, if you choose to bring trank bombs and capture the monster, you might even get better rewards, and also it makes the hunt end quicker, which is also helpful. Sometimes during a hunt, the monster will go to sleep because the fight's been going on that long, or maybe you brought Palico or Palamute weapons that put enemies to sleep. The first hit on a sleep wake up is going to do double damage. So something like Mega Barrel Bombs, that's going to be great to wake up with if you're not running something like, say, a great sword to get the max hit for the wake up. Lastly, and obviously, max potions and ancient potions are great. They're going to full your health bar up in a moment. They take less time to use than, say, a potion, and that can be life-saving as well. Utility like flash bombs to bring a monster out of the air, that's also nice. But essentially what I'm saying is, make sure you have a loadout you bring every single time that benefits you. I run dual blades, so I have stamina problems at times. Energy drinks really help with that, so I always bring them. Now on the note of increasing your survivability, there's two things you absolutely should be doing. Firstly, upgrading your armor. Let's take an example here. These gloves have 80 defense by their natural standard. I can level them 15 times to take their defense from 80 to 108. I've gained 28 defense there on one single armor item. Imagine that on all five. We're talking easily over 100 extra defense. An extra 100 plus defense on all of your gear compared to what you're doing now if you've not been upgrading, that's also life-saving and will also save you so many potions when you do take some damage. Another great option for increasing your defense and making it so that you survive those hits is going to be defense decorations. They're just a simple one slot and it's not even hard to craft them with Basirios pieces and Baroth pieces at that. You're going to find in your sets that you're going to have a lot of one slot decorations to fill. And if you're not running something that's helpful to say like my dragon weapon with the dragon jewels, you might want to run at very least a defense jewel to give yourself that extra survivability. Another great skill that can really help you whether you've reached the end of master rank or you're just still progressing the game it's spirit birds call which is a level one skill very easy to get and it will spawn spirit birds on you at random moments 
These are your temporary buffs that give you extra health, extra stamina, extra defense, extra damage throughout a hunt. And yes, you can run around and gather these and that will give you an advantage, but that takes a while. If you have this skill on, you'll just naturally reach your caps during a hunt, which will make you take more damage before dying, and you'll also be dealing more. You can get the skill on two pieces easily. The Grand Golm Waste, which is a great pick, or the Sailor Hat, which just has the call on it alone. So if you're not sure what skill to run and you're struggling, get that benefit, it really helps. And another aspect of that is the new Rampage decorations. My great suggestion for that, if you're not sure what to go with, is Spirit Bird. This jewel, this decoration, is only a one slot Rampage decoration, so it'll go into any weapon and it will increase the effect of those temporary buffers. So you'll reach your caps even faster. Now, having your buddies actually set up properly makes a ridiculous difference, let me tell you. Other than my Palamute looking like a true gamer, uh, he is also very, very useful. With his Palamute Silk Binder and the Heal Blade Scroll, he's incredibly helpful to me. If you're not sure what to get and maybe you haven't unlocked the Silk Binder just yet, I would recommend the Dual Bladed Chain, literally the default option. This does so much damage, it's really, really good. And then I absolutely recommend the Heal Blade Scroll. This will heal both the Palamute and you if you're near him when he's doing this attack. You can actually manage his behavior in the Palamute behavior tab right here. And I have him on follow so that he's always trying to remain close to me. That means that when that heal goes off, it also heals me quite often, which is really good. Another great aspect of my Palico though is via the Buddy Dojo, we can swap the support moves when you progress the game and unlock this feature at higher levels. So as you can see, I can change from Forbidden Acorn here to literally Shock Tripper, which will give them Thunder Blight or just, hey, an extra trap, which is great. I could go from my Anti-Monster Mine, which is nice, to a Power Drum, increasing my attack power and my defense. Very helpful. I could start making my Palico drop some healing bubbles so I don't have to use health potions. I can pop those mid-combat and keep fighting. And last but not least for your buddies, there's a buddy smithy. Here you can forge equipment for both your Palico and Palamute. I recommend you run either the feline jelly weapon, which is going to give paralysis to the monster, giving you free damage windows like they're in a shock trap, or like I mentioned, a sleep weapon such as the feline cataclysm here. It'll put a monster to sleep during combat, and then you can get a free double damage hit, like say with mega barrel bombs. And we can choose to do much the same with your Palamute as well. Okay, so we all know that eating before a quest is really, really helpful. Helpful. But something that you shouldn't be forgetting to do is use your Dango tickets. Look at this. I have Dango Booster level 4 here, Dango Polisher, Dango Pyro level 3, and Dango Weakener level 1. What I can do is use a single Dango ticket and increase the odds at which these trigger by massive amounts. I'm guaranteeing two of them here and all but guaranteeing the best one. You can see how many Dango tickets I have at the top right, and it's very easy to get more Dango tickets by using the Motley Mix. This is simple. All I have to do is use some of my materials. I have over 250 blue mushrooms here, so I'll just put in like 40 of them. I'll use some money, do the Motley Mix, skip that cinematic just to show you. And cool, so for that, I got some herbal medicine, which is great, that's antidote stuff, and some herbal powder, great. But not only that, because I did that, the cook is gonna want to speak to me, and he's gonna give me some Dango tickets. The more I put into the Motley Mix, the more Dango tickets he's gonna give me, and it's literally as easy as that. Plus, depending on what I use in the Motley Mix, it will change what I get. So I get steak for putting in raw meat, I get gourmet fish for putting in some tuna here, or I could just go for rations with some basic monster parts. And it's an easy and reliable spam resource for your Dango tickets, which you want to be using in most of your hunts. All right, that's quite a lot that I've given you before a hunt. Let's talk about during a hunt. Let's begin with a really important one to know if you somehow do not know it, and it is restocking. So as you can see, I'm going to use a shock trap. I'm going to use the pitfall trap. I'm going to place both my bombs... And I don't know, I'm going to throw a couple of flash bombs as well. The point is, I've used some really, really useful items there for holding a monster in place to get better DPS, or say burst a monster when it's sleeping, or the flash bombs to bring a monster out of the air. Whatever reason it is, I've used these important resources and now they're, they're done, right? But that's not the case. At any point, you can go back to any of the camps where we have a tent and then enter the tent. As you enter the tent, you can go to your item box, Go to your loadout and restock and run them again. Just because you've used them 
doesn't mean you can't get more. And if you're struggling with a monster that's really hard or it's transformed in rage, these things can really help you. So why not make use of them and then keep making use of them? Next, we have a really good feature that you absolutely want to make use of that's been introduced in Sunbreak. If you go to your options and then go down to controls, you will find a new thing buttons for wyvern riding and we have the choice to attack or use the button associated with wyvern riding or just use the button associated meaning we can only activate a wyvern ride when our weapon is sheathed if we attack a monster normally we'll instantly attack it and start wyvern riding but we can change this setting as i've just done and now we're able to trigger a wyvern ride and look at this i can keep attacking it even though it's currently stunned basically what that means is i'm able to finish combo especially with a really heavy strong weapon that's got big special attacks you don't want that to be consumed and interrupted because you triggered a wyvern ride and now you don't get to deal that damage that sucks so with this new feature you can benefit from that another aspect of wyvern riding is how long this mode actually lasts he is stunned he's stuck he's vulnerable i have loads of time i don't need to panic i can take my weapon out sharpen chill and i still after all that time can activate the wyvern ride so yes every time you trigger a wyvern ride and you have the moment you have like a few seconds just yeah go ahead and sharpen there's no reason not to maybe pop a buff or, or heal you have time for at least one of these things before you trigger the wyvern ride now speaking of the traps that you're bringing on your missions or other things like endemic life or wyvern rides something i really want you to do is stop using them immediately you want to use these traps, these CCs, these special abilities at the right time, when they're going to benefit you. Many monsters are going to enrage and they're going to be much more dangerous during that time. Why fight them when they're really hard? Save those traps, save those endemics, whatever it is, a wyvern ride. Use these things when the monster is at its most dangerous. It may be transformed. And during many monsters' transformations, they now become vulnerable. Gormagala is a great example of that. When transformed, those big horns, those antenna at the front, they are so vulnerable. They, they take so much damage. And by dealing enough damage, you also get a benefit of stunning them, knocking them out of the transformation. So dealing damage to the horns during that time, well, that's vital, isn't it? That's when you should be using your traps not beforehand. These free damage windows will let you burst the most vulnerable points and get the massive benefits for long free DPS windows. And it's not just about say traps or endemic life, but you can go run away from a monster during a fight. If it's a problem and you want to get a wyvern ride and help yourself, then do that. Nothing stopping you from stopping the fight, leaving on a palamute, going to another monster and getting a wyvern ride in. That way you can get some free damage, especially during the monster's transformation or enrage. Really, there's no reason not to do this, and you can do it not once but twice every hunt because there's always going to be two monsters on the map that are vulnerable. If you aren't aware, monsters on the map that aren't actually your target in the quest, they can be wyvern road so much faster. They're, they take way less special damage before the wyvern ride actually begins. So take advantage of that. At the start of every mission on any map, there's going to be a route to my target. For example, let's pretend that I'm going to the Gore or the Toby that are in the caves, meaning I'm going to go through area 5 or 11 and make my way over there. So on the way, there's a bunch of useful endemics that I could get just on this map alone. For example, a super obvious one, and this is honestly something I do every single time, no matter which way I'm going. I come from this jungle first main camp, go left and go grab the marionette spider. That way, when the monster's enraged or vulnerable or transformed, when it's best to use it, I'll pull out this endemic and get the benefit. If you aren't sure where these endemics are, like I do, because I've done map tours and videos where I've learned these maps, you can easily pull up your map. The base map doesn't show anything, but you can swap between the tabs and show other endemic life. So I can take a look at this and go, okay, there's a useful endemic here, 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 on the way to my monster. So I will plan a route as I'm on my way to get the various temporary buffs, whether there are damage ups, uh, defense buffs, as well as, yes, endemic life, like the marionette spider, or like a snow beetle, or other beetles, just to give me any edge in the fight. If it's on the way anyway, why wouldn't I take it? So finally, for my last tip to you, one that I was a huge... Yeah, example of this. I would always take damage and then run away and use a potion. And I don't know why I ever did that. It's honestly one of the most dangerous places to be against most monsters in the game. Being at medium to long range, they can gap close or throw something like, say, Toby's doing here, interrupt me in some way. 
suddenly be upon me like so. It's a lot easier and also a lot safer in many cases to stay near the monster. Run around it on its flanks, on its sides, like so. You see, it jumps towards me and it's okay. And I'm right next to it. I'm ready to get right back in the fight after healing. In so many cases, especially late game, it's better to be closer to the monster and then heal rather than be really far away. But there you have it. Those are some of my top tips for you to be a better master rank hunter. Whether you're a returning player or a totally new player, I do hope some of these tips helped you. These are things that I was doing after hundreds of hours of playtime that I could refine and make better. Something as simple as using my traps at the right time when the monster is dangerous or I need to deal damage to a specific spot, that is something it took me a while to actually start doing. So if this type of video or these tips helped you, please do drop a like and then maybe we can make more. If you have any extra tips and suggestions to help other players out though, definitely drop that in the comments. For now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.